the star R.S. Afiyuki suddenly appeared in the Earth's sky as a nova. The circumstances, the significance, and more, let us demonstrate how a rare nova that just occurred in the Milky Way is visible to the naked eye. Let's thus get right to the point, shall we? Because this is about a really interesting event from recent history, as stated in the introduction, the recent nature of this makes it particularly unique because the nova that was produced could really be seen from Earth without the use of special equipment. So, if you were in the correct location on Earth, you could just go and see it, you wouldn't have needed a telescope or a satellite to do so. It can be seen blazing in the constellation Alphaeucus, the serpent bearer in a dark sky. If you are unfamiliar with that term, we advise you to look it up before attempting to view this nova. The fact that this was not a blink and you'll miss it moment was equally significant. Instead, this is a situation where the star's brilliance is actually getting brighter over time. Which implies that the longer it remains in this state, the stronger and more powerful it actually becomes. RSOF typically shines at a magnitude of 12 or thereabouts. Typically, it is too dark to be seen with the naked eye or even the majority of backyard telescopes. However, when it became Nova, the explosion increased the star's brilliance in a way that honestly no one anticipated, which is why this is such a unique thing. Or, at the very least, unique in some respects given what we know about it. Because R.S. Afiyuki is much more than what first appears, believe us when we say that. We say it because R.S. Afiyuki is a single star in a system that is extremely unique. A recurrent nova system is that system. Why does that matter? Simply put, it indicates that novas occur in this star system on a sporadic basis. Part of a two-star system is R.S. Off. One is a white dwarf, an extremely developed and compact star. A red giant is the other. This is significant for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that the white dwarf star regularly travels to and takes material from the red giant because of how close these two stars are to one another. Which isn't inherently terrible, but what happens when it draws in too much energy from that red giant? A nova results from a thermonuclear explosion that occurs. Similar to what we experienced here in early August, the frequency of the explosions for this specific star now relies on a variety of factors. Since the two stars orbit one another, this is actually a cycle that plays out throughout time. It also detonated in 2006 in the case of R.S. Afiyuki, and there have been additional nova explosions documented going back more than 125 years. So, yes, these occurrences do occur frequently. This leads us back to the system itself because, despite the fact that there are many systems in the galaxy and cosmos where nova explosions occur, these events are not intended to occur frequently or at regular intervals. It is truly unusual for R.S. Afiyuki and its methodology to be able to predict when a fresh nova explosion would occur. It follows that, according to the clock we can now use, the white dwarf star will probably start to explode once more in 2036. This is a long time off, but many people will get to watch the nova then, just as we did now. You might want to go witness this nova star for yourself. However, as we hinted at previously, you might not quite know where it is, in which case we're here to assist you. After sunset, the constellation Alphaeucus can be seen towards the south. It is located above the more well-known constellation Sagittarius, which is nearer the horizon and contains the well-known teapot asterism. You can see the area of the sky where R.S. Off is located if you look above the teapot spout and traverse the Milky Way's murky swath. Razelhaig, a star towards the top of the constellation, and Sabic, a star near the bottom, are the two brightest stars in Alphaeucus. Nearly in the middle of the two stars, but farther to the left east, is R.S. Off. There have been reports throughout the past night of my favorite nova, R.S. Off, exploding once more. The most recent outburst was in 2006, and the previous one was in 1985, and the topic of my PhD. 
The eruption of the recurrent Nova RS off making its grand appearance in our Ozus SN images following its outburst two nights ago. The variable star RS off in the Ophiuchus constellation burst yesterday. The outburst can be seen with the unaided eye after sunset despite being 5,000 light years away. As a result, as you can see, a lot of people were paying attention to this incredibly unusual explosion because it doesn't happen often. Who knows when something like will be able to happen again, therefore it's fair to assume that those who were able to witness it and analyses it are ecstatic. There is still some to be discussed on the hows, the whys, and other such factors, so let's briefly return to the NOVA's development process. For instance, if it explodes, how can it explode again? A pertinent query that illuminates the characteristics of the white dwarf star itself. You see, stars have a thermal, pressure, and, of course, mass limit to what they can withstand. As previously mentioned, the Nova is brought on when a red giant star nearby imparts so much mass on it that it must explode. However, when it explodes, it doesn't do so by self-detonating into oblivion as one might imagine from a regular explosion. Instead, it's an explosion of mass because it's releasing all the internal built-up mass. Imagine it as a geyser. Water geysers go off and let off the pressure they're under by ejecting both themselves and the water they contain. Because of the amount of pressure that builds up over a certain period of time, Old Faithful, as it is often called, is actually on a cycle, and the same is true of this star. It will go and blow up all of its extra mass, getting brighter as it does so until it ultimately goes away. And just to be clear, one of the reasons we can observe this mass expulsion is that it is leaving the star at a speed of roughly 2,600 kilometers per second. That group of mass is traveling really quickly. A gamma ray source was also discovered by the Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope around the time and location of the Nova, providing more evidence that an outburst was definitely occurring. More evidence that individuals have been observing this system for some time and couldn't help but notice what is happening. Now, if you will pardon the pun, there is a catch to this explosion. There is a limit to how much it can store in total, despite the fact that it has been able to perform this kind of pressure release throughout time. The Chandrasekhar limit denotes this. Furthermore, if that threshold were to be crossed, the star would have a critical mass style explosion instead of going nova, going supernova. And those who understand what that implies may see why it's a significant deal. For those who are unaware, it indicates that the star will not merely expel its accumulated mass, but will instead explode with the force necessary to destroy everything in its path. It won't have to worry about its cycle after that point because the red giant star would have completely vanished. These are the most potent stars that man has ever seen, at least from a distance, and many people are unsure of when it will happen for this star. Currently, it doesn't appear to be a cause for concern. However, that might alter in the future. And even though we don't yet know how much it will alter, the recurring Nova system will change when that occurs. For the simple reason that, they don't happen that often, scientists aim to examine supernovas as a whole whenever they can. Which is significant when considering the known and unknown that we are continually observing and researching. While it is true that supernovas can occasionally occur in the hundreds every year, they must occur in specific galaxies, such as the Milky Way, in order for us to witness them. However, by researching them, we can go and investigate things like spatial distance, which is not as simple to measure as some would claim, and the impacts they have on their surrounds. The other aspect of this is that when a supernova occurs, the dying star and everything else around it release a plethora of other elements into space as well as the building blocks of new stars. Scientists like to keep an eye on this to see what happens to space overall after these crucial occasions. Therefore, if this were to happen to R.S. Ophiuchus, we would not only be able to see it because of where it is in our sky, but we would also be able to research it rather well. However, as I said earlier, we genuinely don't know if it will supernova at all or when. Therefore, we wait. 
Speaking on RS Ophiuchus, it is important to note that there may be more research that can be done on this nova today than was possible in 2006. After all, throughout those 15 years, a variety of technological advancements probes, satellites, and more have been launched and have continuously improved at taking pictures, gathering data, and other tasks. It's also feasible that as long as the star is visible, scientists will be able to gather new information about it that will help us understand the star, its system, and other things. Is there a guarantee there? No, of course not. After all, in space, very nothing is guaranteed. However, even when it seems like there is nothing else to learn, the prospect of discovery motivates people to continue. You never know what might be discovered with this new nova burst or when the next one might occur for additional investigation to be done. Therefore, if not now, when? Thank you everybody for watching. What did you think of this examination of the unusual nova that did in fact go and erupt in a way that allowed us to see it from Earth? Do you think it amazing that such a significant event could occur and that we could witness it? Do you believe that similar events will inevitably occur in the near future? Or was this truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? Please let us know in the comments section below, and we'll see you on the channel again soon.